Good afternoon, good afternoon uh, uh, to our YouTube videos and uh, viewers and Facebook viewers. I'd like to welcome you this afternoon to our um, divine uh, service, stream live, stream lives on YouTube. Um, I trust that you all be blessed today uh, with our, our Aberdeen divine service this afternoon. Uh, the order for this uh, service will be uh, the children's story uh, by our own uh, Elder Manuel, meditation uh, by our very own Elder Koi, and the Sabbath sermon or the pastor that we have a privilege of giving us the bread this afternoon is Pastor Juan Carlos Patrick. And he is coming from the South England Conference. He's the uh, team's ministry leader there. So we very much uh, thank Pastor Juan for joining us uh, this afternoon. So um, to start us off, we'll have uh, Elder Manuel to give us the children's story. Hello, children. Uh, hello, technical department. Um, I would like permission to uh, pass my my um, uh, slides. Here they are. Uh, I'd, ask, uh, I, I'd like to ask uh, the children to look at this first slide and um, uh, look at the details, yes, but um, the, the, the general view of the slide. And uh, I can see A and uh, there is a nut, uh, a B as a, a butt, uh, and uh, C, uh, is a cat, uh, a dog, elephant, and so on. Uh, the G as a goat, and the K as a kite, L as a lion, and um, P as a penguin, Q as a queen, and the rabbit, and so on. You can see a V as a violin, and the last one, there is a zebra. So what is this? As you can see, our 26, 26 letters, and they are the alphabet. You have uh, in the first row, seven plus seven plus six plus six, we have 26 letters. I would like to ask you without uh, needing a, um, a, an answer, do you know uh, more letters or different letters in the English alphabet. No, there are no more letters. The, there are only 26, 26 letters. Pay attention to them and uh, especially to the number 26 letters. And what we um, see the letters uh, 26 or less make words and the letters, those letters, these letters, <clears throat> we, uh, we can uh, make, uh, um, we can make words and the words build phrases and the phrases or sentence make books, make books, you see? Think about it, it's an exercise for you to think. So we have 26 letters, letters and that those letters make words, the words will phrases or sentence and they make books. Only 26 letters make books. And with letters and words, we can make anagram. This is just um, 
uh, interesting. Anagram is a word or phrase formed by rearranging the letters of a different word or phrase, typically using as the original letters exactly once. Let me explain what is anagram. So for instance, the word anagram itself can rearrange and we can see uh, make with the same letters, the same letters, we can make a nagaram. Let me explain with another example. Also the word binary, we can write with the same letters, brainy. Or the word adob, we can transform into adob, a bot. And the last one this is interesting, this one. With the word or with the letters of the word listen, you can write the same letters of the word listen. You can uh, write silent. It's interesting. This is anagram. And the, uh, for instance, if um, uh, in um, another an example, the same letters, a gentleman, you can write elegant man. The, the, the letters of for restful, we can write fluster or Madame Curry, you can, uh, you probably know uh, this lady that is the scientist that, that um, discovered the radium. And uh, uh, we can, Madame Curie, you can uh, um, uh, write radium curry. And um, if we want to have to have some uh, biblical uh, 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 words, uh, the same letters of Ruth, you can write hurt. Uh, the same letters of Daniel, you can write nail. You can write live the letter of Levi. Amazons, uh, you can write Sansom. And the same letters of Andrew, you can write wonder. Then uh, you can uh, make an exercise of the after in the afternoon you can play with uh, uh, biblical words. In another sense, in another situation, with the letters of the alphabet, we can write nice and nasty words. So I remind, let's remind you that 26 letters make words. And with those nice, with those uh, letters, we can uh, write nice or nasty uh, words. For instance, uh, with um, this is not an anagram. Uh, uh, with uh, this, the the twenty six or part of the twenty six letters, we can write life or death, love or hate, smooth or rough. So with the, those uh, only 26 uh, uh, letters, we can write uh, uh, the opposite uh, sentence with uh, um, uh, letter words. The same letters of the same alphabet can be used in different opposite meanings that what uh, we have here written. Writing or reading books with the same letters the same words, different, we get different results. And I give you an example. Between about uh, 1590 and 1613, Shakespeare wrote at least 37 plays and co collaborated in several more. So uh, he, he, he wrote several books uh, with plays. His 17 comedies include The, the Merchant of Venice and the Macal uh, Ado Not Nothing, and among of his um, uh, 10 history plays, Henry V, uh, the Richard III, and the most famous you have heard probably among the tra tragedies was Hamlet, Othello, and King Lear, and Macbeth. So, uh, with that only 26 uh, letters. But here we come to um, a sort of conclusion. But even if uh, Shakespeare wrote 37 
plays and uh, histories, books, several books, there is no register that someone was converted to the Lord by reading Shakespeare. Nothing against the Shakespeare was, uh, uh, um, was uh, a magnificent uh, writer uh, or reading or any other book, not only books of uh, Shakespeare, but or reading uh, any other book being a romance, historical, police, investigation or, or technical, uh, uh, nobody got converted uh, or changed their life by reading books. Um, and uh, and the, the, it is interesting that the Bible has the same 26 letters of uh, other books, many of them, uh, and they have uh, many other, uh, the same words of other books, but the thing is the Bible converts while other books don't. What is interesting here, I come back and says the Bible has the same 26 letters and they convert people. People get transformed. The words written in the Bible have power and the other books don't. Why? Why? I have a Bible verse that says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God, is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. It, here is the difference. The Bible is the word of God inspired by the Holy Spirit. Um, uh, are not the same letters of the same words of um, the same um, uh, alphabet. Here, we have the same. The letters are the same. The, there are no more letters than those. The letters are the same, but uh, in written in another book, they don't create transformation of the people. Uh, letters, words, phrases, don't convert a thief into an honest person in a normal book. The uh, letters, the same words, letters, the same words, the same uh, phrases, uh, don't uh, turn a criminal in a good citizen. But if the same letters in the Bible, they convert People, they convert people in uh, good citizens. Are not the same letters or the same words that have power to convince and convert people? In the is the it is the uh, uh, spirit that converts. It's not the twenty six letters. It's not the twenty six letters of the alphabet that convert or the words we can make. Uh, uh, um, words or sentences or phrases with uh, uh, the words we can create with the 26 letters or part of the 26 is the Holy Spirit that converts. And as I have here, uh, when you read, you have a Bible in your hands, always think that the book has the power the, because it's inspired, not the letters, not the words, not, not uh, because those words are inspired and because they are uh, inspired, they have power, the, the power of the mighty God that transform the people is interesting. So not the letters of the alphabet, not the words, not the fra phrases, the sentence, uh, but the message the message is inspired by the message uh, which comes from the Lord. So uh, 
we not the letters that is inspiration, it's the message. So the recommendation I do is for you is read your Bible, get instructions, get in knowledge, got uh, uh, good principles and to know more of Jesus, the savior. So if you need a Bible to read or to give to a friend for him or for her to uh, read, just contact us and I'll, and we will provide one, uh, one uh, symbol, sample of the Bible completely free. So it is when you have a Bible in your hands, consider always that that book is inspired and that book has power and power to transform people, to transform a criminal into a good citizen, uh, a thief in the honest person and a bad person in a, a good converted people. But the Bible has power and never forget that. So I ask the Lord to bless you and God bless you. Thank you. It should be the time for meditational. Now behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my soul. He has become my salvation. Therefore, with joy, draw water from the well. And in that day shall he say, praise the Lord. Sing unto the Lord, for he has done great things. And this is known in all the earth. Now behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my soul. He is become my salvation. Sing out and shout, inhabitants of Zion. For great is the Holy One in the midst of thee. Cry out and shout, inhabitants of Zion. For great is the Holy One in the midst of thee. Now behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my soul. He has become my salvation. Yes, He has become my salvation. For He has become my salvation. 
Good afternoon, everybody. God bless you. It is a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much, Pastor NJ, uh, Brother Emmanuel, and the staff and the church for this kind of invitation. Today, we are going to talk about the topic entitled, From Now On. From Now On. This is a topic that we will briefly uh, speak about. Um, while I was in the university back in America, our beloved student dean told us a story of something that he saw when he was growing up in, his, uh, in the countryside. There was a man called the Beast. And well, as you pro probably imagine, if he was called the Beast, it wasn't because he was the kindest man in town. <laughs> he was a very aggressive, violent, proud man. That was not the man that will put off a fight. He will simply go and fight, literally. People were afraid of him. The man was not only violent, but also erratic. And the per it was impossible to be around him. This man, one day, decided that he couldn't go on like this in life. People were afraid of him. People didn't trust him. His family was afraid of him. And although, of course, his family uh, loved him, uh, but they were, he was not a, the, the, a pleasant person to be around. They knew that family uh, meetings will end up in a fight or something like that. Very unpleasant. And one day he decided, you know what? This must stop. I am not only hurting myself, but I'm hurting others too, around uh, those that are around me. He gave his life to the Lord. He accepted God. He went to church. He got baptized. He began going to church. And he had a son, a, a probably a twin, you know, a, a, adult, a, a teenager. This teen was just walking around one day while another young man from that side, from the neighborhood, had a rifle. So he had a rifle and he was just, he was going to probably hunt or something like that. The young boy, the teenager, told this young man who had the rifle, told him, I bet that you can't shoot me. Just playing. And the young man who thought that the, rough, the, the rifle was not loaded, told him, yes, I bet that I can get you. And so he started just running around and he was just uh, uh, aiming at the young boy, just laughing. And he pressed the trigger and sadly, the rifle was loaded and he killed the young man, the, the teenager, the son of the beast right there. The whole town knew what would happen. This man was going to church, but they knew what would happen. He just came to church a few days ago, and we know who he is. So they hide the young man in the mountains until things were clear or they were getting out of town or something. When they went to the beast and they told the beast, your son is dead and such and such killed him accidentally, the beast went crazy. He started crying and he said, Bring that young man to me. That sounds like a Bible verse. <laughs> bring him to me. I want to see him. But people didn't want to bring him it's because they knew the family of the young man, of the young man of the rifle. He, they were scared. People were crying. People were in distress. It was, it was going to be a tragedy on top of another tragedy. And so they said, no, we don't want to. We don't want to bring in, we don't want to bring him to you. We don't want you to see him. He said, please do bring him. And I promise you, I will not do anything. After a lot of discussion, a lot of discussion, they brought the young man. When they were bringing the young man, the beast saw him from afar and he ran towards him. Now you can imagine what happened and how people were uh, scared how the the, the town and um, and i know that area 
that he was mentioning. And in, back in those days, it was even more people would just come out and see things like that. Uh, there was not um, Instagram or Facebook. It was live right there. So you can imagine everybody coming out to see what would happen. He ran towards the young man with all his strength. No one could stop him. Others run after him. And as he was running, the young man simply knelt down and he was ready to die just there. People were shouting, don't do it, don't do it. But when the beast reached the young man, he hugged him. And they began to cry. He said, it was a mistake. I didn't know. I didn't know. And the beast told him, I know that it was a mistake. I know that you didn't want to do this. And I forgive you. They cried. And he adopted that young man as his son. The beast surprised everybody. Because they really, they were expecting that something tragic would happen. But the Lord had changed this man. Only God can do something like that. But only the beast could allow God to do that. One day, the beast stood up and said, from now on, I want to change. I can't keep on living like this. And he gave the opportunity to God to change him. And this is what happened. And as a result of that, many, many more things happened in that area when they saw the change that this, this man has ex had experienced. Like this man, probably some of us are struggling with strong things and feelings. Many people have hurt you. Many people have, probably people have let you down or other things. But like this man, we can also decide that from now on, things by the grace of God are going to change. So if you forget everything that we're going to discuss today, remember this. Today, you can decide. You can say, Lord, from now on, I will allow you to change me. Today, you can do that. And you know what is the happy thing about this? You can do it. The Lord gave you the capacity and the strength to make decisions. And you can decide today, Lord, I want to change. I want you to change me and I want to do whatever it takes in order to be a better human being, a better husband, a better wife, a better son, a better daughter. If you were able to change the beast, you can change me too. So you forget everything. Remember this from now on. Today is the day. From now on, you can tell the Lord, Lord, transform me and change me. I don't want to live like this anymore. We have somebody that did that in the Bible. You know the names. They were two brothers, Simeon and Levi. Simeon and Levi were very, 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 very difficult and also aggressive people. And in the Bible, it tells us in, in Genesis 34, they had a, 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 um, a sister called Dina. And in Genesis 34, the Bible tells us that one day Dina decided to go around town. And she went around town. And in, there was a king called Amor. And he had a son called Shechem. Now, Shechem saw Dina. Uh, Simeon and Levi's uh, sister. And when he saw her, Shechem, the son of the king of that land, he abused her, the Bible says. He abused her. But the Bible says also that he regretted it. And he went and spoke to the parents and said, listen, I want to marry her. The Bible says that Simeon and Levi said, hey, welcome to the family. We are so happy that you are here. Um, yeah, we heard that you uh, abused sexually our, our sister and that now you want to marry her. This is amazing. Congratulations and welcome to our family. Um, well, you know what? We just want one thing. 
because we have some customs and we want you to, we want you to be part of our family. We really do. But for you to be part of our family, you have to circumcise yourselves. All of you, you, your father, and all men in your uh, in in your in your town, in your in your land. So um, uh, Shechem said, "Of course." Now, to be circumcised is like uh, for the teens and the children that may be hearing. It's like an operation that they have to go through. Yes, so they have to actually, it's actually with a knife and uh, they have to cut them and uh, the special people would do that, people who knew that um, uh, would do it. So they did it. All the men in the city did it, including Shechem and the king. And the Bible says in Genesis 34, verse 25 and 26, that on the third day, because on the third day, there was a fever and they were very ill and sick. On the third day, when all of them were in bed, weak and experiencing these fevers and these symptoms, on that same day, Simeon and Levi went into the city and killed every single man there. They not only killed the man, this is where, where, where you could see how tough these young, two young men were. They also slaughtered animals. Everything that was male there, they killed it. And also they killed the, the, the animals. They set things on fire. It was a revenge, but it was a cold-blooded, premeditated. It was well thought and well planned from the beginning. Now, look at the strength that these two young men had in order to take it easy and with a smile, welcome, shake him to the house and say, hey, no problem. It is almost like taking out of a horror movie. The Bible says that when Jacob was blessing all his children in Genesis 49, verse 5 and 7, when he blessed all his children, he was blessing Simeon and Levi, and he said, he said, Simeon and Levi, they are brothers. Their weapons are weapons from hell. God forbid that they advise me one day. God forbid that, that I go where they are and go to their assembly and their meetings. Because in their rage, they kill people. They slaughter animals. They set things on fire. They destroyed. They are children of wrath and anger. Jacob, in Genesis 49, he mentions the animals again. And in the Bible, there is, there is so much. Um, there, are, there is a lot, a lot about that God says about taking care of animals and caring for the animals. And how merciless is somebody that will mistreat animals. And when you take a look at... Um, people that became serial killers later on in life, you will discover if you read their biographies that when they were children, they were very, very cruel towards animals also. So here, Jacob, Jacob brings back that they not only kill human beings, but also they were blind by evil and they also killed the animals. These are Simeon, this is, this, and, and Levi, However, one day in Genesis, uh, sorry, in, in Exodus 32, 32, people were worshiping the golden calf. You remember when they were wor worshiping the golden oxen, the, or the golden ox. And they were worshiping. There was a disaster there going on. Moses was in the mountain receiving the Ten Commandments, and it was chaos in the congregation. Everybody was doing many, many things bad things. So they said, Moses is not coming back. So listen, we need another God. So please do something with this gold. And they made a, an ox. Uh, um, Aaron made an ox. It was chaotic. It was a disaster. When Moses came down, he saw what was happening. The disaster and the chaos that was in the congregation. And he stood up in a place and shouted aloud, who is with God? Who 
is with me. And the Bible says that the tribe of the Levites came and joined Moses and said, we are with you and we are with the Lord. This is, it has to do a lot with what we are talking about because I took the time to tell you who these two young men were because if it is true that they were uh, a very, very violent and that in the promise in Genesis 49, actually there is nothing for them. The Bible says, uh, Jacob says, I will scatter them throughout Israel. You know, I have nothing to say about you. One day, when everything was chaotic, when everything was a disaster and people were doing whatever they wanted to do, Levi said, you know what? I have read about what my father did and I, I have read what my ancestors did, but guess what? We do not have to repeat this story. We are not condemned to do what they did. So why don't we now stand up and join Moses? It is like saying, we are not condemned to repeat the story. Just because our, our fathers did it, we don't have to do it. Just because he, he just rubbish and did bad things to in Shechem, we don't have to do it. We are not condemned, he is, is saying that. Let's stand up and from now on, let's change the history of our family. And that's what happened. They stood up and they changed the history. Until then, uh, Levi was simply the brother of Simeon, another person that loved to see bloodshed and that was erratic and, and a troublemaker. But that day, the children of Levi said, we don't have to do what that did. We don't have to do what our family has done. Today, we can stand and say no more. From now on, we will change the course, not only of our life, but also of our family. And they did. What happened after that is that they became the priests. And, and that's why we actually even have a book called Leviticus in, in, um, in the Old Testament. It is because of Levi. It, we also have the high priest from Levi. We have the priests from Levi. And, and all these things tell us that they were not as scattered. They were not lost because one day they decided, listen, we are not going to do it. You might say, well, but that was actually a prophecy. Yes, it was a prophecy, but they had the chance, the opportunity and also, if I can say the privilege of saying, that's a prophecy, but I am sure that like all the prophecies that God says, but if you change, then I will not do it. This is one of them. People, let's stand up and change. We need to change. And they did it. It was a conscious decision. And not only it was a wish or a prayer, they say yes with their mouth, but they moved with their feet and they joined, um, they joined uh, Moses. So what about us collectively as a tribe of Levites? We have heard the statistics that people leave the Seventh-day Adventist church because of mistreatment. Isn't that something? That is something tough to say that. Some people might say, well, but at least they are not living for doctrine. But that is like saying, um, uh, uh, it, it's like saying, uh, well, um, um, I am not, um, I, I am, you know, harming my body with uh, drugs, but at least I'm not drinking alcohol. It's, 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 it's bad anyway. There are churches around the world and there are places, not only churches, but also families that are like that. Um, it, the atmosphere may be toxic. And every time there is a conversation with, between Papa and Mama, there is a fight and the brothers and the sisters. And every time you receive a phone call is because Uncle Jerry was fighting with Uncle and Aunt Mary. And it's a mess. It could be that. It could be that you come from a family as dysfunctional as Jacob's family. And that is one thing that I like about the Bible. The Bible doesn't hide the fact that, it's, that these families were highly dysfunctional. But it also tells, and it also says that although these families were like that, people decided not to be like that and made a change. So 
What about that? Can we make the change? Yes, we can. We can also say, you know what? I think that the atmosphere here, we need to face it. We cannot be, we cannot keep hiding this elephant in, uh, in a little a drawer. It's here, let's face it. Let's deal with it. Let's change. I remember being in a church and it was a loving church. And you know what? The last, the last um, uh, business meeting that we had in that church, they called me and said, Pastor, we want to have a, a, a business meeting. And uh, they gave me the, the, the topic they wanted to discuss. You know what the topic, the topic was? They wanted to know how they could become a more loving church. They said they wanted that meeting to last two hours, two hours discussing how to be a more loving church. Can you believe something like this? So we collectively, we can also come just like the tribe of Levi and say, we cannot go on like this. This is enough. We need to stop. Now, if you belong to a loving church that has a sense of belonging, where people actually love one another, then amen, you know, and that's, that's great. But if not, then you have the opportunity there. Why not to come together and like Levi say, from now on, we have to change. From now on, we will allow God to change us. From now on, we will just stop doing what we are doing and we will follow the ways of the Lord and we will be more loving towards one another and we will be kinder to one another and we will respect one another. That will be something amazing. That will be some, something fantastic. And you will see how probably people will start coming. God will bring people to your church because of that. Um, he sees, and the Bible says that in, in, in Acts chapter 2, that God added every day those who were going to be saved. God brings people to the church also. Um, because he knows the atmosphere, he, he would say, now that is a safe place where I can bring people. I know that if I bring that person and bring it and put it here to this, in this church, he will be safe. He will not be harmed. Yes, we can do it. You know what? Yes, we can do it. There was a sister whom I will call Mary that uh, told me this story. One day we were having a Bible study Sabbath afternoon and she stood up and told us this story because we were talking about that God can change us and that we can allow him to change uh, us. And she was mentioning that when she was a little child in her church, there was a, a, a gentleman that will always stand up Whenever the pastor was talking uh, in front or in church boards, he will always stand up and contradict and fight. <laughs> so she grew up and then um, became a teenager and the gentleman will always stand up and fight. And in the church boards, he will be fighting. And in meetings, he will be fighting. In social activities, he will be fighting. In holy communions, he will be fighting. So that was him. She said that she grew up, left the country, she got married, she had children, she came back. And one day, one Sabbath afternoon, they were having a meeting and this man stood up. This elderly man that couldn't get up, he just managed to get up and holding on to the benches, he started fighting. And she said that she couldn't believe it. And he's, she said, is that him? And in fact, that was the same gentleman. A whole life fighting. She grew up, had children, left the country, came back to the country. And when she arrived to the country, he find the man still fighting. What a waste of life. So you may be saying, well, yeah, we can come together and decide that we are going to from now on that we are going to change. But what if the, my church or my family doesn't want to change? What if they are already so accustomed to this toxic uh, atmosphere that they love it? It happens. People get accustomed to these things. People get accustomed to, to uh, detrimental ways of lives. Yeah, of living. They get accustomed to fighting. They get accustomed to gossiping. They get accustomed to slandering. They get accustomed to mistreating one another. 
And this becomes part of life. It's normal to them. But it's not normal. It's not healthy. It's not good. So you may be saying, what if I belong to a community or a family with whom I have already spoken, that I have done everything I can, that I have spoken about this, I have sung, I have prayed, I have preached, I have cried, I have begged, I have called, and nothing changes. What then? You may be saying, you may, be belong, you may, you may belong to a family. You say, I'm tired of this fighting. I'm tired of this lack of respect. I'm tired of this detrimental, toxic environment. And I don't know what to do. What about that? What if you can change the situation? What if you can change the attitudes of others? What if you can change the atmosphere? Well, then I have good news for you. If nothing changes around you, you can change. That's right. You can change in the name of the Lord. Is if they don't want to change, then it's time for you and for me to say, from now on, I will change. That's right. And we have an example in the Bible of somebody that did that. Uh, if you remember uh, Zacchaeus in Luke 19, the Bible says that he was a liar. He was a thief. He, this man was, he had dirty business. And although Zacchaeus means pure, he was totally the contrary to what his name meant. He doesn't, he wasn't pure. And he knew he was doing wrong. He knew that he was stealing. He, he knew that he was playing dirty tricks. He knew that he was always trying to get the most, how to exploit others, how to manipulate others, how to abuse others. He knew that he was doing that, but he wanted to meet the Lord Jesus. And Jesus came to his house and people began to criticize Jesus because he went to the uh, house of this man. And so when he was there, uh, the Lord was eating with him. And Zacchaeus stood up in Luke 19, verse 8, and he said, Lord, from now on, I am not going to steal anymore. I'm not going to lie. And not only this. Everything that I stole, I will repay it once uh, to them, and I will give them more than what I took away from them. It, this is amazing, because this man is saying, if I stole from you a donkey, I will give you three donkeys and three cows. And Jesus saw that, and he was so happy. He was saying, my goodness, this is great, he said. He said, Zacchaeus, I tell you one thing, salvation has come to your house today. So, what are we seeing here? We see the example of somebody that decided to change. He didn't go and try to change the whole council of publicans. He didn't pass a new law. He didn't go on a strike. He couldn't maybe. He didn't fight with the, uh, with the Roman soldiers. He didn't go and fight with the senators or um, with the uh, Roman officers, but he decided to change. He said, from now on, Lord, I'm not going to do this. So if you can change things around, if, if you can't change the atmosphere of probably your workplace or school or church or even home, you can change yours. You can change your attitude. You can change your disposition. You can change you. You can say to the Lord, Lord, from now on, I want to allow you to change me. I cannot keep living like this. I can't. So you may be coming from a home where abusive language was the norm. But today you can say, Lord, from now on, I will be kind to my husband or to my wife or my children or to whoever I come into contact with. Lord, I'm not destined or condemned to repeat the story. Or, uh, or to repeat the scenes that I see, whatever, school, workplace, church, or home. Today, you can do it. Uh, probably you come from a home where they abuse alcohol. And somebody told you, well, your dad was an alcoholic, you too. That's a lie. That's not true. That's not true. Today, you can say, you know what? What happened at home will be 
the fuel that will push me forward to be different. And instead of beating myself or feeling ashamed for uh, whatever, if it was abusive language or alcohol or whatever it is, instead of feeling ashamed for them, what I will do is that I will take that example and I will decide to be a better human being, a better Christian, a, a blessing to those who surround me. So like the Levites did, instead of being ashamed, oh, you remember what that did? Uh, no, they didn't do that. They stood up and said, Moses, we are with you. So tell us what to do. So you can do it too. Today, you can do it. Maybe you were, um, you grew up in a family that was, as we said, uh, abuse alcohol or use abusive language or probably even abuse drugs. And you think that you are condemned, that it runs in your genes. This is what we have been told. No, it's not like that. No, it's not like that. You can change today. Um, if, if it was something else, actually, you can decide today, you know what? I will take care of myself. I will eat less sugar. I will stop eating junk food. Um, I, I will just put myself in, in tune with God's will in order to accomplish what the Lord wants for me. You can do that. Probably you grew up in a home where people didn't talk good about others, you know, that the atmosphere was about gossip or slander, things like that. And you think that you are condemned, that you have to repeat the story and the things that you heard home. You don't have to. You can say from now on, unless I don't have anything good to say about somebody, I will keep my mouth quiet, my mouth quiet. You can do that too. The thing is that by the grace of God, we can do it. We can say no more. We can stop procrastinating. Look around you. Maybe that is something that that you can do. Maybe you can start that book that you have uh, that that you haven't, uh, that you have put off. Maybe, maybe you, you have seen and copied and imitated a, a procrastinating uh, behavior. Maybe you grew up seeing that or you learn it. I don't know. But you have learned to put off things. You have learned to delay the replies, your emails or phone calls or things like that. But today you may say, you know what, from now on, as soon as something comes in, I will just answer it immediately to get rid of it, to sort it. That's right. In the name of Jesus, you can do it just like Zacchaeus did and just like Levi did. You can decide I will eat healthier or I will be more active. I will take care of my mind. And if I need professional help in order to accomplish this, I will do it. That's right. Because if God forbid one of us break a leg, I'm sure that you will pray, but you will also call the ambulance. And guess what? We come from homes and sometimes we have emotional bones broken. We have also psychological bones broken and they also need to be fixed. So if we need professional help in order to deal with things that are preventing us from reaching what God wants us to reach, then by all means do it. Don't be ashamed about that. Because what you want to do is to live better. What you want to do is to reach that what God has said that he wants to give you. What you want is to have a more abundant life. You don't want to live a half life. You don't want this life to pass by and say, I wish I did and you didn't. What God wants you to do is to start today that you can say it, that you could say, you know what? I'm going to stand up. I'm going to, to, to reach that what God has for me. But I don't know. Maybe it's a painting. Maybe you paint and it's a long time you haven't. Why not to start today or to start a group of prayer? or calling people, or sending texts saying, how are you doing? There are so many, many things that we can start. And um, one of the things the pastor told me was that the, the, the theme of the church is actually about new starts, new beginnings. And that is why we have chosen the, the, this title, uh, From Now On, just like Zacchaeus just like Levi, and just like so many others, not only in uh, biblical history, but also in secular history, that decided to uh, make that change in the name of Jesus and to start having a better life. Let me tell you one thing. If there is one person that will be blessed by this, is you. You will bless others, but you will experience the peace of the Lord. You will experience that life, 
probably you have lived a whole life being the slave of people's opinions, afraid of people, uh, nervous about what people will think or say about you. Well, today is the day to break those chains and be free in Jesus. What a life would you have if you will stop torturing yourself uh, about um, what people might think or say about you. And somebody said that of all the freedoms, one of the greatest freedoms is to be free from people. Imagine if today you decide, Lord, set me free. So why not? We are not condemned to repeat the story. We are not condemned to repeat the same scenes. Uh, if these people were able to do extraordinary changes by God's grace, he can also do it with you if you decide today with the grace of God, with the strength of God. We can achieve it if we uh, decide to follow the Lord, to allow him to operate in us. We can change our ways if we allow him to say, uh, we say, Lord, change my ways, change my attitude, change the way I think about myself and around the, and about the world. Put me in contact with good people, with mature people, with um, a spiritual people. Maybe you have been the friends of people that are always putting you down and insulting you in one way or the other. People with whom when you speak, you, uh, when you put down that phone, you feel depressed and sad. Not too long ago, I was speaking with somebody who told me, um, every time I speak with this friend of mine, I just want to die. Just like that, this person told me. And this person is, a, is somebody committed to the Lord. I feel like garbage, like rubbish, useless and without value. Every time this person calls me, even when I am helping this person, this uh, friend was telling me, this other friend finds way to put me down, to put my family down, to put my... I feel like rubbish after this. So I was telling this person, what about then taking some measures? You can talk to this person and say, hey, listen, why are you doing this? I've, maybe this person grew up like that. You see, maybe this person was raised like that. Maybe this person never heard an I love you from her parents. And maybe this person always heard put downs at home. Or maybe she learned it. Who knows? But you are dealing with something here greater than you. And regardless of what this friend of yours may be saying, you are not garbage. You are valuable. And it's time that today, from now on, we begin to recognize that, that your value doesn't um, depend on people's opinions. People's opinions are contaminated by their own experiences and prejudices. After the conversation, this person was so happy and decided to put a few, a few things in order. And if you can deal with it, it is not seen to say, I can't talk with this person. Not with respect, I am so sorry, but I just simply can't uh, deal with this. Recognize it. I have another friend and he was, before coming to church, he was an alcoholic. And um, um, he, whenever, whenever there was alcohol, he will step aside and, and run away from there because he recognized he had a problem with that. So it's not a problem to do that. It's not a problem to recognize that while you're getting the help from the Lord, while the Lord is operating, while you're looking for help, that you will stay away from those things that will hurt you. That is not anti-biblical. To take care of yourself is actually biblical. We speak a lot about Christ going to the, to, to the cross, but we don't talk too much about Christ running away from the cross. And Christ, Christ ran away from the cross for 33 years and a half. Whenever you see Christ, you will see uh, uh, that something is going on. They tried to kill him. They tried to arrest him or something happened. You will hear him say, and he left because his time had not come. So taking care of yourself is not bad. Taking care of your mind is not bad. Staying away from, uh, even if it is toxic people that make you sick, that put you down, that, that are detrimental to your spiritual, physical, emotional, and psychological health is not a sin. We have been told that so many times, but it's a lie. 
God wants you to have life and have life abundantly. There are others who would say, well, that's a prophecy. What can we do about it? Well, it is written. What can we do about it? Really? But you know what else is written if you go to the to, to Google? If you go if you Google what happens if I jump from the ninth floor, it is written what will happen there. It will tell you. Just because it is written, it doesn't mean that I will sit down and 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 let it overflow me and eat me alive. Just because it says that in the end. There will be um, uh, uh, people that will be, the Bible says, disrespectful to their parents, that will be uh, arrogant and evil. That doesn't mean that I have to be one of them. Yes, it doesn't mean that you are, that it has to be fulfilled in you, because there are other things that are also that God wants to fulfill in you. Therefore, from today onwards, we can say, Lord, change me. Lord, give me the strength. Lord, put the people in contact with me. Go, Lord, show me the books. What is it that you would like me to do? And I, and I will do it. Yes, we can do it today. We can have a new beginning today. We can change history today by God's grace. Not only our history, but also the history of our own families. You can be the first one in your family to do something great. And remember, probably your parents didn't have the opportunities that you have or the knowledge that you have or the facilities that you have. Maybe they didn't and they did the best they could with what they had. But you, you have other opportunities. You have other doors open to you that they didn't have. And therefore, I encourage you to walk to stand up and to make that change, to make the world a better place, to make the church a better place, to make your family a better place, to make yourself a better person in the name of Jesus. We have so many stories from Genesis to Revelation of people that stood up and say, no more, no more. Today, I began to have a new life in Jesus. And this is what he uh, invites you to do today. This is what I would like to encourage you to do today. When are we going to do it? When? Tomorrow? Next week? Well, the Bible says in our scripture reading in 2 Corinthians 6, 2, the right time is now. Today is the day of salvation. We can begin today. So I will encourage you to finish that project that you began. That is probably under the bed there, covering in spider webs, I would like to encourage you today to procrastinate no more and start doing it. I will start to encourage you, uh, to encourage you today to get up in the morning. And the first thing that you would do before touching that iPhone or that mobile is, Lord, thank you for this day. Show me what you want me to do. I encourage you today to start having a a, a more a abundant a prayer life. I, I encourage you today to start having a, a more positive attitude uh, towards yourself, to, to see you as God sees you. Today, I encourage you to do this. Today, I encourage you to change the rest of the history of your life. Yes, that's right. Today, we can start in the name of Jesus. And that from now on, from now on, we may believe his promises, we may acquire them, we may appropriate them, and we may say, Lord, uh, here I am, uh, change me like you did, uh, like you changed Levi, change me like you changed that man called the beast, change me like you changed Zacchaeus, I'm in your hands, show me what you want me to do, put in my life the right people the right sources, the right book. I want to be a blessing to others. I want to be a blessing to my family, to my community. I want to live abund the abundant life that you have promised. I want, Lord, to represent you here and to uh, fulfill the heavenly dreams that you have for me. And therefore, here I am. Lord, from now on, I am completely yours. Use me and guide me. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. At this time, I would like to have a prayer and um, to ask the Lord to guide us and to, from now on, to take control of our lives and to, and to lead us, to fulfill his plans and promises in our lives, 
to give us a soft heart to uh, let him guide us and to bless you wherever you are in uh, those that are watching through um, YouTube or uh, Facebook and those that are here too. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your mercy and we thank you for your love. And we thank you, Lord, because uh, there is power in you to make us uh, better human beings, better Christians, better wives, better husbands, better sons, better daughters. You have it, Lord. We can't, but you can. not And we come to you because you can. We want to experience, Father, what you have for us. We are tired of living this um, life. And we want to see what else you have for us. But we can't. And so, like Levi, that experienced such a blessing after deciding for you, like Zacchaeus, like that gentleman in the countryside uh, that we mentioned at the beginning, we also want to join them and there's thousands and millions that have decided to follow you. We decide to allow you Lord, to change us from now on, change our ways, our attitudes, the way we think about ourselves. Father, help us to think about ourselves the way you think about us. Help us to believe you from now on. Give us faith. Help us to trust you and to accept your word for us. We thank you for this opportunity. And um, we give you permission to intervene in our lives and to start this process today. And that as we wake up every morning, we will give you every day the opportunity. Every day we will say from now on, Lord, today, Lord, now, Lord, change us and be with us. And that as we change, others may be blessed and also change and have a more abundant life in you. Thank you for hearing us. Bless those that are watching, Lord. You know what they are going through. Be with them. Give them your peace and your healing, Father. We thank you for everything you've done. We thank you, Lord, because um, we might not come from perfect families, but they were the families you chose for us, and we have learned. We want to use whatever we have gone through in our families, not as something that will put us down, but actually as fuel that will, that will propel us forward. We thank you for our parents. Bless them, Lord. And if they are sleeping, that we trust, as your word declares, that you are the Savior and that we will see them again. Bless the children, the teenagers, the youth, the adults and the elderly in these churches and, and also YouTube and Facebook. We thank you for hearing our word, our prayer. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. Amen. Amen.